mm -hmm. like as a solo player, you have to control two characters, and so it's tougher on your hands, but you have absolute control, right? Mm -hmm. So um, as a duo, like Tony said, you have a coach with you, right? And so if you can like figure out how to work together, maybe it's harder for you to get like the most advanced combos, but you have two brains working against one. Right. And that one solo uh -huh. player maybe has to adapt to two different play styles, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so like we're really interested to see like what players do with that and how it evolves. Um, and so we're, we're leaving like the doors wide open because this is like, we think the start is something that could be like interesting and cool. <laughs> and like, how cool would it be like if you had like a duo that like really gelled together and, and but then they broke up, right? And then they met in the bracket as solos, right? Dude, you want to talk, you're trying to go in like Beatles territory here, right? You know? Dude, well, so let me ask you this. How good are you two together as a team? Yeah, we've never played as a duo, actually. Are you serious? Yeah, not really. No. It's hard. Lies, well, lies, <laughs> lies. <laughs> no, I mean, we play test the game fairly frequently, several times a week. It's all online just the remote oh, studio right, right, right. LA and mm -hmm. uh, Seattle, some people around the world. And so um, a lot of times we'll, we'll just do ad hoc, you know, matchmaking and like, you know, you go with your partner and um, we have the ability to like pick your partner and go with them together, but like often their schedules won't align. And, and like, we're really okay. just focused on building the game and getting feedback on the game, not in, like, creating the world's best duo. Yeah, so, yeah we, we sort of hung it up. <laughs> I just yeah. want to know if you two played together, would you be like, Really cooperative, or was it like oh, it'd typical be a siblings? Yeah, it'd be yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I don't think that, yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to see that. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but I mean, you know, in terms of just like fighting game philosophies, I mean, do you, do you have any sort of specific philosophies? I mean, I talked about it with the other guys on the couch, you know. Laugh, you remember, brought up the idea of heart, body, and mind and kind of things like that. You know, when you guys are making a fighting game, do you guys think about that kind of thing? Like trying to appeal to the scientists, trying to appeal to the players who absolutely hate training mode, you know, the, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, we do, and, um, you know, um, that sort of, you know, part head and hands, like, framework mm -hmm, is something mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that we think about a lot. Um, one that um, I like is, um, you know, just finding the fun, right? Yeah. Um, too often, like, accessibility is seen as, like, a zero-sum game where, like, if you want to make it, like, appeal to casuals, it, 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 un it, it has to be worse for, like, the hardcore players. Right. And, mm -hmm. and that's true a lot of the times, but it's not always true, right? And so for L, we're looking for opportunities where, like, what's fun for a new player? Like, casual hardcore doesn't matter. Someone who's new to fighting games, what's fun? And how can you, like, get them into it and find that fun literally the first time they play the game, right? And if you can do that in a way where it doesn't hurt or sometimes maybe even helps like the hardcore player those are the opportunities we look for right yeah. um yeah, yeah. and ideally I it should be a smooth curve like you don't want to like oh this is fun for a new player oh you want to play the game seriously now you need to unlearn everything that you thought right. was fun and play the real game right it should be a smooth road of development where it's like oh this is fun oh i learned something maybe i'll try that next time and you're building mastery as you go having fun the whole way right. yeah that's that's the dream it's very hard to get right <laughs> oh, we know it's sure. hard to get right we know everybody says this but like <laughs> like that's what we're chasing after and that's what's great about being able to build this game at riot yeah. is they really i mean it's obvious at this point because we've been working on this game forever. <laughs> <laughs> but they really give us the time to like iterate and get it right um, because we want to be working on this game like 10 years from now. Okay, okay. Like, I mean, but, like but you'll after have it yeah, after release. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. There, yeah. You don't mean that you're going to be working on it <laughs> right. and 10 years later we'll finally be <laughs> right, able to right. play. No, 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 no. But I mean, because I mean, that's obviously one of those things that's kind of like a misnomer in the FGC, right? Like to lower the entry level, you got to lower the ceiling kind right. of thing. But you could, I mean, I always cite Melee as a perfect example, right? It's one of those games that you can pick up and have fun, but it is just like one of the deepest fighting games yeah. out there, right? And, and that's kind of the philosophy that you guys are going for here. Yeah, and that's one reason why like every character in the roster has like a big button, right? Or a button that gives you a really clear, obvious outcome. It's like, I hit this button, this thing happens, cool, I got it. Hopefully that was fun to do, but you know, you find a couple of them, then you can start to like get over like, how do I control my character? But like, how do I use like this hammer and this like, you know, I don't know, this bazooka that I have to right. like do cool stuff. Nice. So, I mean, for you guys right now playing this, obviously we only know the four characters here. Who's your favorite of these four characters for each of you? 
Ooh, that's a tough one. Ooh, I think to play, I like Darius. I like the big buttons. Okay. Right. Um, thematically, I, I really love how uh, Ari's league and sort of outside league persona made it way in its way okay. in game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ari, Ari, I think is my favorite so far, um, just because like. Uh, the creative that work that went into realizing like a mage combat fantasy mm -hmm. where it's like uh, She does so many things that she didn't do in League like even her normals How should her normals work like in League right. she throws uh, like a projectile like that would not work in a fighting game, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so it took a lot of iteration and time to get that right, but like um, What we're aspiring for is like if you know League, right? You see a champ do something new. You've never seen him do it before. And you go, oh, of course Ari can do that, right? <laughs> and I think, like, the team has really nailed that with Ari, so she's my favorite. Oh, I mean, how much leeway has Riot given you guys to realize, you know, brand new moves, co co create complete new, yeah. you know, move sets for these characters? Yeah, they put a lot of trust in us. Really? Um, oh, yeah, which is great. So, um, been great working with the League of Legends IP. There are so many awesome characters, and they're so varied and different. Like, this is an IP with, like, robots and mages and big guys with axes and, and like, you know, enchanters. It's like, we can, we can do anything with this IP. Um, and to have, like, the trust of the company to just, like, you know, go for it has been great. It's been a dream. Yeah, and also the support of the company. Like, if we need to, um, like, Kyohei is the designer behind Yasuo. Right. Uh -huh. And um, Kyohei did not play Yasuo in League of Legends, <laughs> but, but we had access to the, the designers who worked on Yasuo oh, and okay. people who had, um, you know, played Yasuo internally forever and like people who like, and we would ask them like, what is the spirit of Yasuo? What is, and we learned stuff like, you know, he's like a wind swordsman, but he doesn't fly. Like he controls the wind. Right. And, like, and so, we, and being able to like interview people and get that, and get feedback on early iterations, like internally. Yeah is really helping us realize the soul of these characters so we can express them in a fighting game. <laughs> and hearing like League players say like, this is what it feels like to play Yasuo, we're like, got it, right? <laughs> and then how do we give you that feeling like with fighting game mechanics, even if the moves are different? Has there ever been anything where someone was like, no, they would never do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Oh, okay, okay, and then, okay. You know, we try some stuff and we, we get some stuff right, we get some stuff wrong, and then we iterate and eventually we get there. Uh,